cotton, an important factor in the history and development of the United States, is today our largest cash crop. It outranks corn and wheat by a considerable margin, even though only 16 of our 48 states grow it in quantity. The cotton gin invented in 1793 did away with laborious hand separation of lint from seed. But hand labor in the growing of cotton continued through the years. Chopping or hoeing and tedious hand picking require more labor than for any of our other major crops. However, this picturesque activity, subject of song and story for many decades, will soon be a thing of the past. Cotton growing from seed time to harvest time is fast becoming mechanized. The tractor planter that can handle two or four rows at a time is replacing the mule and plow. The tractor cultivator is taking the place of most of the field hands with their hoes. And the ingenious mechanical picker, for years thought to be an impossibility, is today a reality, doing the work of countless hands. Yes, cotton is growing up. Different territories require different planting methods, but there's a planter set up for each variation. Whether it be flat land or beds, irrigated land or dry land, there's a ground rig to fit, and it's quick, easy, and accurate. Precision planting with machines spaces seed evenly in straight rows for less thinning and for easier cultivation. Tractor cultivating is, of course, the accepted method today. And here again, there's a cultivator suited to the various kinds of planting and to different soil conditions ranging from stiff clay to loose, silty loam. One, two, or four rows can be cultivated at a time, and the field can be kept loose and open to prevent evaporation and to allow soil moisture to penetrate easily. By mounting the cultivator between the front and rear wheels, contour rows can be cultivated closely and at normal speed. Cutting out weeds and excess cotton plants in the row is the single advantage of hand chopping. But now, machines can do it too. Here is how. Cross chopping with a Model G and a tool bar type cultivator. Tools can be set at any desired spacing. It does a fine job and eliminates 90% of hand chopping. Quick change wheel widths and adjustable shovels make it possible to do cross chopping with the larger tractors and with the same results. Practically all of the cultivators today can be set up to side dress the crop with fertilizer after it started to grow. Many cotton growers prefer this method over putting out all the fertilizer at planting time. Another new technique is pre-emergent spraying of the ground with weed killer at the time the seed is planted. It is being tried with success in some areas. Wide press wheels pack the ground over the seed and immediately the pre-emergent solution is applied. The spray provides a protective band on both sides of the row. The young cotton plants push up through this coating, but no weeds or grass get through. They are killed on contact with the chemical. With no weeds between the plants, ordinary machine cultivation with the rows will keep the field clean. This field of healthy plants has never been touched by a hoe. Precision planting together with weed eradication in the row has been accomplished entirely by machine with the help of a pre-emergent spray. Inventing a machine that would successfully do the work of the cotton picker's fingers was not an easily solved problem. Many persons devoted much time, thought, and effort to it and the passing years with rising labor costs made the need for such a machine more urgent. Hand picking was a bottleneck in large-scale production. In devising a mechanical picker, one would naturally try to duplicate the plucking and stripping action of the fingers. But strangely enough, an entirely different action proved successful. It was based on a very simple thing. The tendency of cotton fiber to cling to anything moist such as a finger dipped in water. When a dry pencil is twisted in the cotton, there is practically no adhering effect. But now watch what happens when the pencil is wet. The fibers cling to it, 
and the cotton can be rolled up, seed and all. So metal spindles were devised with fluted or corrugated surfaces together with a means of keeping them moist. When dry, as with the pencil, the spindle, even when turned, will not pick up the cotton. But when wet, it will take hold. And because it turns when in the plant, it twists the cotton out cleanly. Now strip the cotton from the spindle and you have the basic principle of the mechanical picker. This simple diagram tells the story. As the machine travels down the row, the moistened spindles whirl as they contact the open bowls, wrap up the lint, pass through a stripper to remove it, and then come around again. In the picker, there are over 1,200 spindles mounted in an endless chain rattle for each cotton row. As each spindle comes around into the row, it starts to spin and continues to do so until it leaves the row. Notice how each group of bowls reveals the shape of the plant they came from. The fibers are spun out cleanly and quickly. A stripper removes the picked cotton and drops it into a conveyor to the bin or basket. Any unopened bowls on the plants are not injured because there are no rasps or rough points to tear them. Just a gentle wrapping motion and a lot of it. The fact that the picking spindles on the Alice Chalmers machines cannot tear or wreck the plants is of great importance in territories where the plants do not mature evenly. Any required number of pickings can be made without destroying the plants. Here's the cotton that growers dream about. Two bales or more to the acre. Of course, it's in California, where both water and fertilizer can be fully controlled to fit the crop and the soil. This machine is picking 18 bales of top grade cotton in a 10 hour day. Here's another unusual way of making time. Unload on the run and get back into the rows. The raw cotton looks pretty delicate, but it's really a tough customer and will stand a lot of abuse. And of course, in irrigated regions, you don't have to worry about sudden rainstorms. This is the second picking of a California field that also turned out more than two bales to the acre. That's a lot of cotton, and it would certainly require a lot of help to pick by hand. Arizona also grows some fine crops of long staple irrigated cotton. Yields per acre compare with those of California, but acreages are rather limited. Texas also produces excellent cotton, and of course, it has the big fields where a two-row picker is a natural. These two machines are working on the edge of the Rio Grande Valley. The Delta is real cotton country, all the way from Missouri down through Mississippi. Here's a two-row unloading shop that tells the story of the big basket that holds a lot of cotton without being top-heavy. For the smaller acreage grower, there's a one-row picker using the same general design and picking unit mounted on a two-plow model CA tractor. It does the same clean, thorough picking job without tearing the plants to pieces. It picks into a smaller bin or basket which is dumped by the hydraulic mechanism of the tractor. Notice that it dumps completely over. This picker is working in Mississippi. This one found its place in California in the irrigated cotton. The single row can be mounted on the larger WD tractor if desired. In either case, the tractor can be quickly detached from the picker unit and converted to a regular field tractor. Here's one that is listing up the ground to get it in shape for irrigation and another crop. Yes, all through the cotton states, from California to the Carolinas, new methods are replacing the old. The hoe, the mule, and the long sacks are passing out of the picture. The man with the hoe now rides the row. Today it's not only possible but profitable to grow cotton mechanically from seed time to harvest time to grow more and better cotton on fewer acres with greater return for less work. Time waits for no man, and with proper equipment, no weights are necessary. Cotton has grown up. <laughs>